As far as travellers are concerned, malaria is, a f is frequently an, an important risk and uh, people need to, travellers should get informed and take the necessary precautions. So one is uh, understanding where malaria transmission will occur and whether they would be at risk or not. So for example, in many malarious countries, um, the big cities and people staying in air-conditioned hotels would not be a high risk. On the other hand, if they're on safari traveling in the countryside, that puts them at much higher risk. So it's really being educated and understanding what, the, what your exposure is. Then uh, getting advice about what sort of preventive measures to take is important. And we talk about physical prevention of bites, chemical in terms of repellents, and then drug prophylaxis. And really people who aren't sure about what they should take should get advice from uh, their GP or, or travel uh, medicine service. Um, some people who may be doing cross-Africa travel may be out of reach of medical service for long periods and they might consider taking uh, rapid diagnostic tests and standby treatment with a big proviso that they know how to use both of those, that they're trained on how to do the rapid tests and secondly that they are taking the right uh, standby treatment. The World Health Organization recommends that all cases of suspected malaria be confirmed using parasite-based diagnostic testing, either microscopy or rapid diagnostic tests, before administering treatment. Results of parasitological confirmation can be available in 30 minutes or less. Treatment solely on the basis of symptoms should only be considered when a parasitological diagnosis is not possible.